Again, hello everyone to this second dataset affiliate webinar um, that uh, we are having. It's great to, to see you joining this webinar. Today, uh, our focus is on um, giving an introduction to PIDs, but also having a look at how important metadata um, and metadata completeness is in terms of, um, yeah, yeah, what they have to do with PIDs and your and the impact that they have on on your research and the vis visibility of your research, uh, as such, and um, and also in the end we will have a presentation about um, the um, the registration of DOIs um, a data site. So uh, let's get started. Um, and as you will know, this um, this webinar will be recorded. You can see it on our YouTube channel soon within the next two weeks. Um, and so we will have um, that uh, um, recording online as well as the slides afterwards, uh, which we will share with you. So you don't need to write things down. So I will talk, uh, we'll be talking about uh, data site, giving a short intro, also about uh, person assistant identifiers, uh, what they are, what, the, what you can do with them, and, and um, to which things uh, people or organizations they apply. Uh, then a short intro to metadata, that, which will then lead to the second talk by Bozo. So let's get started with DataSite. DataSite is a non, uh, global nonprofit membership organization that works with over 2,100 repositories in the world to provide digital object identifiers, uh, of the acronym is DOIs, uh, for data, uh, research data and other research outputs. And as you can see on this short infographic here is that if an institution has a research outputs, um, you can assign DOIs to these very research outputs like data, software, publication, text publications, or even samples. Then, um, then you can connect those um, research outputs via these DOIs because you can link, interlink them and, and cite them and refer to them, uh, which in turn makes them more, even more discoverable because they, they are more visible in and, and large databases and, and uh, can be found uh, even better in, in, in scientific or research discovery systems, so, uh, such as the data site commons that we offer, but also uh, other um, databases such as uh, Google Scholar. And in turn, not only in, in terms of visibility, they, DOIs help you to, to, um, to increase the impact of your research, but also as, as for your institution, and yourself, it's easy to track them, uh, the impact of your research, because there are a lot, a lot of systems that um, give you statistics about how they are, uh, how many times they were viewed or even downloaded and even cited. So this is really um, creates a circle or a life, uh, life circle of, of how um, your research um, benefits from DUIs. Um, here are some, some statistics or numbers about uh, data site. As I said, we are a membership um, um, organization um, with a lot, a lot of members around the globe, also in, in, uh, in Africa with, um, with uh, consortia uh, growing. And uh, as you can see, like over 27 million DUIs registered so far since the beginning of uh, um, data site in 2009. So let's get to the... Um, to the topic of persistent identifiers. So persistent identifiers, you can see an, an example of a DOI um, that is, um, that is uh, in the data dried repository. And um, that's basically a special URI, a URL, sorry, um, that um, point, always points to the same resource. So you have, you have the, this other link that it points to, and, um, this is what it makes special because it, it might be that in, in the future that the repository changes its URL um, due to a name change or institutional change. Uh, and if that like th that institution has to take care of that, this, this URL is always correct and we point to that very URL. So uh, the DOI always remains like it's persistent. It uh, remains available independent of anybody on institution systems or system implementations. It's universal because there's only one in the world uh, that, that uh, of, of this very kind. Um, uh, unique, um, it refers to only to this only one uh, project, uh, sorry, uh, object. 
and um, and it's basically it's it's an identifier as it says in the name. It's a referring uh, it's a string of digits that refers to that object. And uh, it's it should always be an actionable um, identifier, or it's mostly one, seeing that uh, it's resolvable. So you can put the DUI.org uh, at the beginning, but I will come to, to that in a minute. There are many sorts of PIDs in the world. Uh, I will, I'll just focus on on, on uh, like the three major categories that we have. There are PIDs, um, or like the system that identifies PIDs for for people, for researchers uh, in particular, there is the Open Research and Contributor ID, uh, in short, ORCID ID, um, which you might know. Um, there is an example of this, how this, uh, this PID looks like. And the other, uh, then the other one coming up is the um, PID for institutions uh, and research, or research organizations from the Research Organization Registry, short, ROAR. You can see also this resolvable um, 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 PID or raw ID that refers to uh, specific institutions because um, also institutions and only people need to be disambiguated because there might be institutions that have uh, similar names and need to be um, um, attributed properly as, as people also do. And then there are people or uh, PIDs for things or research outputs that um, that there are like UIs, handles, IGs, and ARCs, and, and many more. Here's an example, as I said, from, from um, Datadrite uh, 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 resolvable, resolvable DOI um, PID. And how do PIDs work? Like it's, it's basically a matter of service, as I said. Um, um, somebody has to um, um, be committed at your institution uh, within the repository or uh, a research information system that where they have provide to to your researchers uh, open scholarly infrastructures and and the the accompanying metadata that that belongs to this very research outputs and through these services that they have um, they they can provide the metadata that comes along with the research output um, to to data site and then we pass it on as I said in the beginning to other research databases. Um, in the world so that other researchers can work with them, cite them and refer to them. Uh, um, and so your, your research becomes more visible. We do that, uh, uh, the, the PID string is in a consistent schema, as I said, like we ha you have the, at the beginning, the, the, um, the domain of doi.org. Um, and then you have the prefix that um, belongs to, to your very institution or to the respective institutions that you're, um, you're uh, registering a DUI with, and then you have the suffix that specifically uh, refers to the to the research uh, output, research data set, software, you name it. And what, in 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 conclusion, what makes PIDs so fantastic is that um, they prevent link rot. You, I guess, you also had uh, or encountered the four four. Uh, um, Error when when you want to visit some websites. If that that happens to uh, that would happen to research, it would, this would be a complete disaster. This is what DOIs or PIDs in general uh, they prevent because they are consistently available in the future. This is why data site and other PID providers take care of, of making this research um, uh, persistent, persistently available by um, by providing this infrastructure for for these persistent URLs. Um, they provide unique identification um, for publications, data sets, and, and people or, or organizations and, and all kinds of things that you can imagine. There, there are also PIDs for projects, for conferences and all that, so that these things can um, persistently and uniquely identified because there, there, there needs to be some uh, disambiguation in all these, um, in all these aspects. Um, and a bigger citation that's really important because you need to be uh, properly uh, cited uh, for or accredited for the research that, that you're doing. This is really makes an impact on your career or on the career of your researchers. And um, as I said, like all these PIDs, they uh, they work best if they work together. Like if they link to each other. If a PID like an, an ORCID ID is also linked to the research output of a DOI and then also to the raw ID of of the respective institution where the 
research was conducted. So um, this is really, really important. Um, then, yeah, assignment of research contributions, as I said, like um, who contributed to which kind of part of, of the research that has been done. Uh, that is really important for, for your scientific record or of the uh, record of the um, researchers. And last but not least, it's not it's not uh, only a thing that we came up with, but it's also uh, a, an important issue in the research life cycle that starts with the, the point that research funders and organizations recommend and sometimes also require these uh, the usage of PIDs uh, in your in your research. Um, and PIDs make research data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, fair. Uh, but I guess Boson will uh, will come to that uh, later as well. Um, here's a short uh, tree diagram that you can have a look at. I don't want to go into details because we don't have much time, but just to share this with you, um, um, if you want, um, like for which purposes you would need what kind of um, PID, um, a DOI handle or uh, a national um, scheme-based PID like a URN, NBN, um, you can go through this um, to through this decision tree in order to find out which one is the best um, identifier for my use case in the in the sense that you want if you want to refer and cite data sets you should go go for um, DOIs uh, but if you want to have um, identified data sets within an internal system there is definitely a handle or the URN and the end. The way to go. Um, you can also see in within the uh, um, uh, the source at the bottom of, of the slide, so you can refer to that as well. Then some some words on the metadata. As I said, metadata is really important for the PID because uh, no research uh, has impact if there's not any metadata that describes this research. Because other researchers, the public needs to know what the researchers wanted to do or have done within their research. And so that's why we have mandatory recommended and optional fields in order to describe this resource. And also 28 um, resource types that we describe the resource um, type of this uh, research output. And the more information we have, the more metadata we have, the better. Um, here's some two examples of how the metadata, why the metadata is important because it uh, uh, it, it shows relations between entities, digital entities, such as authors, institutions, publications, data set. So you can see how they are linked, but you can also see within the PIT graph, which is a huge, um, basically a huge database of open PIDs um, that link these entities, as I said, like data sets and people and organizations. So you can see how they work together um, perfectly. So um, basically your institution's research data deserves a great home in the sense that um, metadata needs to be complete. And as you can see, we have mandatory fields there obviously filled, but there's a lot, a long tail, uh, not of, like a lot of um, um, fields are not being filled out by researchers or research institutions, which they should. And we provide this data set a metadata schema since 2009. Um, that, that allows you to add as much um, uh, metadata as possible to make data site or to make metadata or the research outputs fair. We have that within our vision. Uh, we have a vision as a, a, a data site that um, um, with a strategic plan that implements this vision within the next three years um, that focuses on the improvement of metadata and metadata completeness. Um, also feeding into um, uh, enhancing the PID graph and supporting the implementation and enhancing discovery of solutions. Um, and I want to just want to like this is, could be yeah seen as a call to action. Like let's build this uh, great home together because we as a the data side um, as a PID product we we do our share of of providing this infrastructure, but we also and, and also the the op the option to to um, have metadata um, to, to fill out the, all the metadata fields that there are. But there are also things that researchers need, need to contribute to uh, that would be the metadata that, um, that describes their research. So love your data um, persistently um, and assign a DOI or other PIDs to it. 
that was my talk. Um, and I guess I will stop sharing now and um, to stick with the um, with the uh, topic of metadata completeness, I, I would like to pass it on to to Boson. Yeah, we can see your screen, but you're still muted, I guess. Can you unmute yourself I, or maybe I, I cannot hear you, Ozone. Maybe the others can hear you. Are you able to hear person? I, I cannot hear you. Sorry, I think you can hear me now. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, now I can hear you. Go um, ahead, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Um, welcome everyone. Um, I'll be focusing more on the relevance of metadata in fear. Um, I will be going deep into the completeness of metadata. But as you can see in this image that we have here, there is this insect. And if I see the insect as an image, uh, what can I know about it? Then I know about the file name, who is the author or who is the creator? What date was it captured? And precisely where? Was it in Africa, Europe, North America, or what, whichever part of the world that comes from? So that introduces us to metadata. And yeah, why should we be talking about metadata? What was the fuse about it? Metadata itself is a combination of two words, meta and data. Data is fact and statistics collected for reference or for analysis. So when you have fact that is not analyzed, it's not yet data, it's meaningless. But it's when it's getting some value making, giving some information, this has been data. Meta is taken from an Asian word and some call it beyond, some say after or say behind. And that's why we have what like metaphysics that is beyond ordinary physics, meta economics. You no, know, those are just some example. So if I combine the two together, I can say metadata is a set of data that describes and gives information about other data that's taken from lexical. In other words, data about other data is called metadata. It is the attribute, for instance, about a book. If I have a book, I should know who is the author, what date was it published, what's the subject, where can I find it, and so on and so forth. That is getting more insight to it. From a scholarly perspective, metadata is what makes data citable. Citable means that you are making reference to the data. It makes it searchable and accessible. It makes it to be visible for you. If you are searching your computer, you are looking for a particular file called paper or called country. There may be a lot of them, but when you look at the attributes, maybe the date it was created, the date it was modified, you can easily drill down to where your data is. It must meet specific standard, basic standard, and adhere to the uniformity and consistency of the schema. That is big grammar. When Paul was making his presentation, it shows us some information that are needed when you are creating the PID. And those components, are what make up what you call metadata. For instance, when you talk about author, the author, we always expect that you should have what's called ORCID ID. And if you're talking about institution, you can have your, your role and then the persistent identifier for the data. Those are specific information that you are expected to provide in a standard way. And there are several standards or schema. 
for instance, in my organization, CGI had, we have what is called CG Core. We are currently using version two. Data site is currently on data site metadata standard 4.4. Popular metadata sites and metadata standards that we have include Dublin Core, Darwin, DDI, and we have many more that are known. So I give an example of what is called metadata. Here we have a data which I've circled. The part here that we have data is where the, inform the data itself is. But what makes the data to be discoverable when you are searching through search engine are the additional information that you have here. And above here, we have tags. These tags were taken from the information that you have here. It's also take some part of it from the data itself. So if I'm searching for data from Africa, this information can come out from Africa, south of Sahara, it's agricultural data from a particular organization called African Rising and it's taken in East Africa. It's about maize and many things and CPG on peace. So that is giving you information about this data. And this is a standard schema. It's a standard template or data table to put it in a simpler language. Then if you're talking about fear, Fear itself is never fear without metadata. The word fear stands for findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability. For your data to be findable, you must have what is called persistent identifier. And in this case, we recommend DOHI, data side DOHI, which is a component of metadata it must have rich metadata. Rich metadata means that when I type, I'm, on, I'm finding, I'm looking for information about Europe and I want it to drill down to Portugal. And then from Portugal, I want to know more about certain city. The information about that data should be available on a system called metadata. And then when you talk about accessibility, the metadata must always be available. The day it is not available, that data will not be accessible. So it must be available at all time. And in terms of interoperability, what metadata does is that, for instance, if I have data from European Union and I have another one, from African Junior, I want to match this data together. What I need to match at the back end that will make them to interoperate is the metadata. It is like having tables. I'm going to look at the similarities and then we combine them using code. It's metadata that is making that information interoperable. And if you talk about reusability, I can reuse the data without no information about data that I'm trying to use. So metadata is the information about that data. And then when I combine it with my current data, it's going to produce a new one and I'm going to produce information about that new data that I'm producing. So basically, fear rests on metadata. The fear principle is lying on metadata. If metadata crumbles, then fear crumbles also. And then, for instance, if I'm searching for music, I cannot just be singing without, I mean, the song itself has lyrics. Somebody sang that song, that song has a title. That title is a component of metadata. The composer of the song who owns the patent, or who has the copyright, sorry, is the one that I see as being the author in the component of metadata. So it makes finding relevant data easier. And for videos, for images and audios, it will be quite difficult to find information or to find data without having information about it. So when I was looking for sound of music, I love that video anyway, I put sound of music and I could see the video that I'm looking for, so as you see on the image there. And what is another relevance of metadata? It is make, going to make your data to be easy to retrieve. You can easily reuse. 
and give attribution. So when I go to the search engine, I type in spectacles. It is going to give me information about it. Then when I see what I'm looking for, I can reuse it. If it's made, I can edit depending on the license. If the license allows me to make use of it without giving attribution, I will see it in there. And that is one of the major relevant of metadata, why you should always have metadata. It makes your work to be attributed back to you. Also, when you in academic environment, in scholarly environment, in research environment, we love being cited. I love my work to be cited. I want to see the impact of my data or of my work. And when it comes to that, we need metadata. It's what facilitates data citation, whether it's APA, MLA, Vancouver, Chicago, Harvard, they all depend on metadata. It is important we note that this metadata itself is the one that we use on search engine. And for instance, I was looking for data that belongs to high ATA in a, in a big data repository, a platform that mines data called Guardian. And when I put in high ATA, I could see data that high ATA have deposited. As at the time I did that, it was giving me well over 8,441 data coming from I mean, publications and 249 data at that time. But now it is well over 2,000 data that we have there. So this metadata itself, for you as an academia, it enhances your library discovery. When you have a compilation of books, resources, maybe in digital environment, when people are searching it, searching for information, it produces such a data and also points to the location where it's taken from. That is the work of metadata. And the ownership itself of particular publication or the right to use it, you specify it through metadata. If not so, there, there won't be anything called plagiarism. So ownership, rights, and management, it comes from metadata. And when you want to detect plagiarism, metadata is what helps you out. It also promotes data visibility. All such engine mix of metadata to, for you to be able to know or see what you're looking for. When you want to make impact reports, the impact factors that we always use when we publish papers is built on metadata. You can see reasons why if you really want to get the right visibility to be fair with your work, you can't afford to joke with metadata. And that is why DOI, like data site, builds rich metadata to support your visibility. And also for organizations, it can help us to profile the kind of work that you produce because of the use of DOI. It keeps on identifying that this is coming from high ATA. For instance, in, and we use data side DOI, we have, that is what is called a prefix. That prefix is associated with high ATA. So anytime you see work from high ATA, the initial set identify the organization and then subsequently talks about the author and the data then the publication that you have made itself, you can easily track it. All these are the build up engine that we have that make your data to be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Thank you. Thanks, Boson. That was a really nice introduction on, on, and talk about the relevance of metadata for, for research and also in particular, um, um concerning fairness of, of research outputs so maybe looking on the clock um with an eye on the clock we can um move forward um yeah yeah i just uh, wanted to say that um please post your questions either in the q a um tool uh, that you can see at the bottom of the bar or also in the chat and we will come to that in the q a session after all the talks um and i would like to Hand it over to, to Mohammed from Somaliland talking about uh, DOI registration. So, Mohammed, please, uh, the stage is yours and uh, share your screen. Thank you, uh, uh, Paul. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. Yes, looks all right. Thanks. 
Thank you. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mohamed Ali and I work for Somalrin as a services portfolio manager. Uh, yeah, in this presentation, we will see how we can register a data DOI on our repository, uh, which is uh, Solar. Uh, so a bit about Somalren. Somalren is uh, a membership-based organization, uh, which is uh, owned by it is member institutions, which are 24 members right now, uh, including uh, the universities and uh, research institutions. Uh, our mission is to drive the digital transformation of the higher education and research sector in the, in the country. Uh, we are currently a member of, of two regional organizations, Ubuntu Net Alliance and uh, ASREN, the Association of Arab Region uh, Research and Education Network. Uh, a bit about the repository that we are going to use for the step-by-step -step registering the DOI uh, is called SOR, which is Somali Research and Education Repository. Uh, it is a uh, digital repository, which is uh, a multi-institutional digital repository system. And it is based on Invenio and Zenodo. Uh, SOR will enable the Somali higher education and research institutions uh, to uh, host their research and educational resources to get uh, greater visibility and increased access. Uh, and it has a lot of features, uh, which uh, most of the digital repositories uh, have. Uh, it includes that uh, the data that is, uh, uh, or the articles and uh, research output is uh, uploaded on SORER will be citable, discoverable, and it is uh, it, uh, it can be integrated with ORCID. Uh, it supports uh, creating communities so that some of the universities who are not ready to have their own uh, repository to just create communities. Uh, and it is also safe to use it. And uh, it supports uh, yeah, multiple uh, licensing types and it is flexible. Uh, so if, if uh, registering this a DOI on SOR, uh, of course, every uh, research output that is uploaded on SOR will be tagged with an official digital object identifier, the DOI, uh, issued by data site. Uh, we thank uh, for Ubuntu.net for allowing us to use uh, the, this DOI. Yeah, so next, I will just show you how we can upload on, uh, on our repository, and then we'll have uh, a practical, uh, practically see how we can do it on our repository. So first we need to uh, log in on the digital repository and then uh, yeah, click on the upload button. Uh, and then we need to choose to upload a new upload. And then we, can, we need to first choose the file and then uh, upload it. After that, we have to select what kind of the, the communities that these uploads will be uh, available. Uh, and you can choose more than one community, of course. And then we need to specify the type of the publication that we are going to upload. Uh, next, then we need to uh, give, uh, yeah, if, if there, for example, if you have, maybe you may have uploaded this publication uh, on another system, which also registers a DOI. For that, you can just reserve the DOI, uh, or maybe you can uh, leave it empty and it automatically means. And then you need to choose the publication date, title, and the author. And it's highly recommended that you uh, provide the ORCID ID. And then some basic information like the keyword is description, affection, and so on. And then we need to uh, choose the license. Uh, we actually uh, uh, urge the, uh, the, the, our member institution is to make the publication is uh, open access. So like you can give the license you see here, creative communist attribution and commercial uh, share alike. 
Okay, and then if there is uh, some grantees, then you can add all relevant grantees here. Uh, after that, maybe you can add some information about like uh, if it is uh, a book, if it is a journal, or if it, if it is a presentation that you have uh, presented at the conference and so on. After that, then you, you need to save it and then publish it. After publishing it, of course, uh, it will be curated by the community uh, curator. And then uh, it will uh, be, your upload will be tagged with the DOI issued by that site. So let's just see it uh, uh, in a practical way uh, on our uh, repository. Okay. So here I am on our repository and then we just choose uh, upload and we make a new upload. After that, we need to choose the file first. And then we have to upload it. After that, we will need to choose uh, the communities that we need to upload it. Uh, for example, Somnok, Sorad, and Somalven. And then we just uh, uh, choose this is a presentation. Okay, we don't need to reserve. Uh, a DOI, so we will just uh, yeah uh, leave it empty, and then uh, registering. We just give the title. Uh, Okay, and then this is uh, the author. And then of course, uh, you need to add your ORCID ID. Maybe I can put it from here and then put it. Yeah, and then we need some, some description of course. Uh, Uh, we sh okay, uh, Yeah, and then we may need to add some keywords here, like uh, TOI, data site, let's say metadata, so on. Yeah, and then we choose here the license. Yeah, creative uh, communist attribution, non-commercial, sorry, share alike. And you, you can add if there is any grant here. Uh, yeah, so also we can add if we need some references or maybe the title of the webinar and so on. Uh, for the interest of time, I will just uh, leave it at this and then we publish it. Yeah, as you can see here, uh, here, this upload now is tagged with uh, a DOI, and uh, we can we can we can find it using just like here, DOI.org. If we check the three hundred ten, sorry. So this is, this is the upload that we have done now. And as you can see, it has a DOI uh, uh, registered for this uh, upload. That's all, thank you. Uh, back to you, Paul. 
Thank you, Mohammed, for this this uh, great uh, introduction to to the registration of DUIs at Somaliland. And um, yeah, then we quickly uh, hand it over to Jared, um, who will be presenting also a registration um, step by step tutorial. So here you go, Jared. I can see your slides all right. But you're still muted. Oh, sorry. Sorry, everyone. Is that uh, on a full screen, Paul? Uh, not yet on full screen, but I can hear you. All right. So let me do that. How about now? Now it's full screen. Thanks. And um, go ahead. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you uh, for being on board. And uh, also thank you for the uh, organizing committee to give me the opportunity to present uh, uh, registering dead site do I step by step for Nadra Ethiopia. Uh, my name is Yarid and I am a, a lecturer as well as a, a carpentry instructor here in Ethiopia. I've been working with, uh, with a number of organizations including uh, uh, the carpentries. Uh, and uh, when, when I come to uh, the presentation how does the NADRI manage to get to a data site? And uh, before dwelling into the subject matter, I want to uh, raise, because Mohammed earlier has described uh, so much of how <clears throat> one can get a DUA data site, but I would like to uh, give you an insight in which we have undertaken a step or procedures to make, to make uh, DUA uh, for NADRI. Uh, as you know, universities are advocates for open access to research, which is why some top universities are working hard to increase the number of open access articles available both on NADRE and elsewhere, uh, whether it is an academic digital uh, library or an academic digital repository of uh, research in uh, universities or research institutions. The, the then Ministry of Science and Higher Education in Ethiopia, or MOSHE uh, in short, and now Ministry of Education adopted a national open access policy in 2019 that mandates open access to all published articles, thesis, dissertations, and data resulting from uh, publicly funded research conducted by staff and students at the universities, which are under the ministries, the number of 47 universities across Ethiopia and other uh, institutional repositories as well. Uh, when it comes to issuing with opening up, this has been an hassle. A lot of Ethiopian universities, are, as well as uh, academic uh, institutions and research institutions, have been striving for years, and now has come to conclusion that uh, open access has also a benefit, uh, not only for Ethiopians, also for um, uh, uh, others who are interested in researches, which is being done in Ethiopia as well. So uh, since 2016, 60. This has been under consideration uh, in collaboration with uh, a consortium of Ethiopian academic and research libraries, as well as Addis Ababa University, the uh, well-known university in Ethiopia, to improve open access awareness in Ethiopia. And also, uh, there has been an, a considerable effort from uh, HESC, Ethiopian uh, Education Strategy Center, in bringing about uh, digital literacy trainings to Ethiopia and increasing digital literacy for researchers, data carpentry, software carpentry, library carpentry training has been going on uh, since 2016 here in Ethiopia. Uh, open science, open data access, uh, open access has been also uh, being done with the association of uh, Sai Guy. I hope like uh, so many people know this, this organization when it comes to open access, open data and open science. The workshop on research and data stewardship and e-infrastructure for Ethiopian stakeholders was also organized by HESC uh, and other uh, concerned uh, organizations here in Ethiopia. These are the four most uh, uh, universities uh, which has taken considerable effort in bring about open access policy in, in Ethiopia. Uh, Addis Ababa University, Adama Science and Technology University, Awasa, and as well as Arbamich University. Since then, now open access 
is being implemented in many areas of uh, Ethiopian universities. Uh, the mission of the NADRE, the National Academic Digital Repository of Ethiopia, was uh, simply put, uh, it intends to provide researchers, lecturers, students and stakeholders from outside of the academic world access to all research works published by Ethiopian universities and research institutions so that research can be shared, uh, research are fair, they are findable, citable and as well as discoverable, discoverable, discoverable and communities are engaged in funding and other granting opportunities are also uh, uh, are, are able to be uh, accessed and source of the funding for articles and dissertations any digital content that has put that are going to be put on Nadre are really uh, uh, known and uh, flexibly licensing as well uh, specifically uh, when it comes to uh, Nadre how it all started for Nadre to get DUI has been uh, uh, has been uh, uh, supported by many activities done prior the establishment of NADRE as well as uh, bringing DUI, uh, digital um, object identifier, for, for NADRE contents as well. So in 2016, an wrote experience regarding open science workshop uh, via the SciGuy workshop open uh, and also uh, an open science for research without volunteers which is taken in 2016 in Senegal, Dakar. And in 2017, the Ethernet e-research archivist is held in Addis Ababa. Uh, Ethernet hosted Ubuntu Connect uh, 2017 conference here in Addis as well, which has brought uh, new dynamics for open access and open science and uh, open data policy. Uh, and in 2018, the NADRE kickoff conference is held with partic participation of international experts here in Addis Ababa as well. And in 2019, the actual implementation of the National Academic Digital Repository of Ethiopia started and workshop on research data st stewardship and e infrastructure for Ethiopian stakeholders are given uh, for different stakeholders in universities and academic institutions uh, and also uh, 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 research institutions. Until today, this ongoing process of training and continuous maintenance on the NADRE platform is ongoing. And it has brought a new, uh, I mean, a better uh, perspective towards digital content organization, management, as well as uh, manipulation. Who is involved in NADRE project? Uh, different stakeholders, as I, as I told you earlier, as are involved. Uh, these stakeholders are Ministry of Education, uh, the GIZ, uh, German, um, uh, uh, has brought a funding for, for, for this particular platform, Ethernet of Naran, uh, which is actually of uh, uh, Ubuntu uh, Alliance uh, as of now, and the HESC Education Strategy Center for Ethiopia, and Ethiopian public universities and research institutions are also uh, affiliated with this uh, 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 NADRE project at first. W what are the responsibilities residing for each of these organizations? It is disseminating the standards necessary to accommodate research workers to NADRE repository, including research ethics, uh, promoting the creation of ORC ID to the researchers, managing the issuance of uh, digital object identifier to tag research documents. Again, Ethernet has brought both the technicality as well as the working space or the space for the uh, academic digital repositories as well as the NADRE itself and has also brought uh, an opportunity to manage the creation of document object identifier sub prefixes to the requesting institutions and training IT staff to cope up with challenges and periodic maintenance uh, has been there. And responsibility of Ethiopian uh, Strategy Center has also uh, was uh, training, consulting, and organizing workshop for the case. So to come to the main objective of this uh, webinar, uh, the data site do I prefix 10, 20, 372, uh, which was originally assigned to NADRE in the context of an agreement that has been done between the Ministry of Education and the, the Conference of Rectors of Italian Universities, which is a data site member in Italy. And later, this uh, uh, agreement uh, is handover uh, to Ubuntu Net Alliance uh, lately, and uh, it is uh, uh, the now with the Ubuntu Net that this NADRE uh, document object, uh, digital object identifier is uh, being uh, managed. And in summary, 
Ethiopian universities are working hard to increase the number of open access articles available on NADRE and elsewhere with proper uh, digital object identifier data site. Uh, Minister of Education adopted a national open access policy in 2019, uh, and the data site to a prefix was given uh, with an uh, agreement that is done between the uh, rectors of Italian universities, uh, which is a member of uh, data site at, at that moment, and now this is handed over to uh, Ubuntu Alliance. Uh, and the issue of registering do I is a series of steps that requires considerable effort from many stakeholders. So uh, I advise personally uh, that this uh, giving do I to uh, content or so digital content is need to be taken uh, with many stakeholders involved so that it will take, uh, I, I mean, it will be materialized for the very objective of why these platforms are, at the, uh, are there at the very first place. And Ethernet is behind all the same and all the uh, managing the dual content is for the digital content is across uh, many academic digital repositories in Ethiopia. And uh, this is a typical website for NADRE, National Academic Digital Repository of Ethiopia. As you can see, the digital object uh, identifier number for, for, for example, for this particular paper of mine is given uh, and uh, all the information necessary to, to do so are there. And thank you so much. And uh, I will now hand over uh, the session to Mr. Paul. Thank you, Jared. Uh, that was very nice and interesting, the, your presentation about NADRA. 